everyone. I'm Lenore. I'm the founder and shelter manager here at Piedmont Farm Animal Refuge. And we are hanging out with the sheep today. Everybody is in the wooded part of their habitat. Just hanging out, having a great day, staying cool. We're going to come back out here in a minute. Let's go inside the house and see who might be hanging out in there. This is Flower. Flower is our oldest resident. She is due to turn 19 years old this summer. Flower is an interesting type of sheep called a hair sheep. A lot of people look at her and think that she might be a goat. But Flower has the ability to shed her hair when it is the warm season that it is now. And then she can grow a... <laughs> yeah, what you talking about? She can grow a fluffy coat in the winter, and you can see she has a little bit of a fluffy coat remaining on her neck and her chest area that she's still working on shedding for the, for the year. But this is a great um, ability because sheep in the wild <laughs> are able to do this, and it really helps them manage uh, heating and cooling of their own bodies. Other sheep uh, have been bred with the ability to not be able to shed. So, uh, they were bred for maximum wool production, and because of that, they can no longer do that. You can see as I'm petting Flower, I'm getting even more hair. So she is in full shedding mode right now, as she should be, as we're in spring and moving into summertime. Yes, that feels so good. Now, um, Flower is a sheep who came from Apex, North Carolina, from a farm where uh, unfortunately, coyotes came in, they did not have a safe housing structure for them, and she was the only sheep left alive on that property. Um, so she came to the refuge to have some more friends, meet some other sheep. Uh, as it turns out, she loves people more than she loves sheep, so she gets a lot of extra attention and uh, lots of grooming and petting from all of our volunteers, um, and she seems to like it that way. One thing you might notice about Flower is that she is, as one of our older residents, um, has a few health issues. Um, she does have arthritis due to her age, and she also unfortunately has um, some cancer in the bladder reproductive part of her body that um, we can't really treat, we can't get rid of the cancer, but we do treat it by keeping her happy with some pain medication that she gets every day and you'll see some of the wraps on her legs are covering some of that pain medication that is on a patch. Flower's hoping for some treats. <laughs> Flower, we're going to go out and see some other <laughs> friends. We'll see you later, okay? <laughs> The sheep will come over. Sheep, 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 sheep. Come on. Sheep, 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 sheep. Sheep, sheep, sheep. Hi. Sheep, 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 sheep. This is Luther. And Bean. Hey guys. Sheep, 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 sheep. Anyone want to come for some pets? This is Bo. Now these guys have quite a woolly coat. This is pretty much maximum wool here. This is almost a full year's worth of wool growth. And we actually have these guys scheduled for a shearing next week. So they're gonna look quite different after that and they're probably gonna feel a lot better than they do now. It hasn't been too hot yet, but over time, little bits of straw and other plant material make their way into the coat. And so it feels really nice for them to get all of that old wool off and then really be able to get a good scratch in. 
but these guys are quite loving a lot of them really enjoy getting some love and some scratches yes now Bo and the other sheep you see behind us came from upstate New York from a butchery that was shut down by law enforcement due to some extreme neglect of the animals on the property. Um, this case actually was quite large. There were around 200 animals found alive on the property and a number of sanctuaries from the New York area came together to get those animals to safety and then many of them went across the country to sanctuaries all over so they could find a permanent home. And so Bo and his buddies came here in 2015 from New York. Um, the property where they came from, a lot of the animals had been starved and a lot of their health needs had been completely ignored. In fact, the sheep had not been shorn in close to two years, we estimate, when they arrived. So they were quite woolly and some of them could barely see because of all of that accumulation of hair. Um, that probably, with all that hair, that probably would have meant that if they were in the south, here in North Carolina, they wouldn't have survived through two summers because sheep can actually overheat um, from having too much hair. They also can have so much hair that when they lay down, it's hard for them to stand back up again. And this can cause them to kind of have a panic attack and sometimes they can have a heart attack or other health problems from that. So the fact that they were in New York probably was why they were able to go two years without shearing. Um, but the biggest change in, in these guys since they first came, yeah, get that itch, is uh, just their emotional state. They were very shy and nervous about any people when they first came, which is very understandable. And many of them now love to come up for affection, um, which is really wonderful. We love to see that they feel like they're finally safe and at home. Yes. Oh, who else is here? Now, this is Oliver. Oliver was actually born at the refuge. Uh, we actually had four lambs. <laughs> Bo doesn't want to share. <laughs> We had four lambs that were born here from the sheep from the butchery. It was actually quite amazing. Um, three of them arrived very pregnant and a few months afterwards gave birth. So Oliver is actually a twin. His, his sister Molly and him were born to his mother Esme. And um, the, the young ones, since they were born at the refuge, they tend to be uh, a little bit more outgoing as well because they've only really known a good time and Oliver says I'm not gonna compete with Bo for all that he's so big <laughs> now some interesting facts about sheep um, if you're able to get a look into their eyes sheep and goats both have a rectangular shaped pupil instead of a round pupil like we do and this allows them to see much more peripheral vision than we do. Not only are their eyes positioned on the side of their face, that helps a lot with that, but that pupil extended back gives them even more vision. In fact, sheep have over 300 degrees of vision, which is quite amazing. They can't quite see all the way around themselves, but pretty dang close. Flower came out. Wanted to see what we were up to. Now, sheep's vision is also very important to them in being able to recognize those around them that they know. Uh, science tells us that sheep have a memory for at least 50 faces at a time. So they will memorize, of course, all the faces of their sheep friends, maybe some other animals that they see regularly, and then perhaps some people in their lives. And uh, we notice this at the refuge. If you are a regular volunteer, somebody that they know well, you might get this kind of a treatment. <laughs> Whereas if you're not, the sheep might be a little wary of you, they might run away from you until they realize that you're one of their people and that you're safe. So that's a really cool thing about the sheep is when you are indoctrinated into the herd. Oh, that's the best part, yes. Bean is getting some love from Lindsay. <laughs> Oh yeah, Bean. He's getting into that. Another fact.
fact about sheep that a lot of people don't know is they actually have a naturally long tail. And most of the sheep here at the refuge have that tail. And we might be able to um, get a shot of that in a minute. But most people, including myself as a younger person, kind of imagine sheep in our minds to have this short little bobtail. And unfortunately, the reality is, is that most sheep do have that bobtail because their tails are docked or cut off um, at wool farms and at meat farms. And so that's an unfortunate thing that happens to them. They don't get pain medication or anesthetic when this occurs. Um, usually it is either uh, docked with a rubber band where they just tie it so tightly that it restricts the blood flow or they just cut it off. And in fact, some breeds of sheep have not only the tail cut, but also the skin on the rear is sliced off. And this process called museling is basically done out of laziness. The, the farms don't want to spend the time it might take to clean up the rear end of a sheep who might be sick, have some runny poop. And so they simply cut off those areas so that they're not wooly and exposed and are gonna catch that fecal matter. But just like other animals, the sheep tail is used for various purposes, including communication. Sometimes you'll see them wiggling them and waggling them in different ways, and I don't know what they're saying, but if I were a sheep, I would know. Very important. Now here at the refuge, our sheep have a wooded area, which they're hanging out in today, and then they are rotated into a pasture area on the other side um, and they kind of go back and forth, and this allows the vegetation in each area to kind of recover a bit from the sheep. And their house is situated in between each area, so it's not too far of a journey for them to go one way into the woods or go the other way into their pasture. Let's see if we can come meet a few more sheep. Now one thing you might notice in the sheep woods are these sort of UFO looking like structures. Uh, these are actually biting fly attractors and uh, these are a type that are often used with horses uh, where the large inflatable black ball serves as a lure to the flies. The flies just are extremely attracted to it and just want to hang out around that device instead of bother the sheep. And so when we first noticed this was a problem with our sheep, we did some research and then we installed one and sure enough it was very effective so we installed a second one. of what we're doing creeping around in the woods. We'll let her decide if she wants to come over. But Coconut uh, is actually a mother. She came here uh, with the other sheep from the butchery and was pregnant with Clover. Uh, she was the second mom to give birth. Um, one thing about Coconut is that she has an eye that is completely blind. This is due to her having an eye infection. It was actually pink eye. There she goes. Uh, that was not treated at the butchery and that uh, persisted for many years and because of that it, it damaged that eye beyond repair. <laughs> Bean has come over to see us. He says, excuse me, but I would like more pets, please. Hi, Bean. Now, when you're petting a sheep, one really cool thing that you notice right away that may be hard to see visually is that sheep have a lot of oil in the wool. It actually comes from glands deep down in the skin. And this oil is called lanolin. I can feel that it's all over my hands right now and it feels really nice. Now, sheep have this because number one, it helps water to stay off of the body. Imagine if Bean were out on a rainy day and he didn't have a house to come into and all of this wool got completely soaked with water, it would actually be extremely heavy and it would be difficult for him to move around. So the lanolin is nature's way of letting that water just roll off of the wool and help it from getting soaked. The second really cool thing about lanolin is 
it has natural healing properties. So um, a lot of lanolin products are in lotions and um, other body care products that people use because of those special healing properties. But with sheep, it's simply helpful if they were to get a small cut on their body from a thorn bush or something like that, uh, the lanolin was able to go in there and help that cut uh, heal very quickly. So it's a pretty magical thing that they have. Oh, that's a good spot, yes. <laughs> oh my. Now, as I mentioned, these sheep are um, going to be receiving their haircuts next week. Um, it's not a day we really look forward to at the refuge because even though we have a very slow and gentle process here and we try to minimize the stress for them, they still are pretty stressed out by being turned over. We have to get all the wool on the belly and on the legs and on the chest. Um, but what do we do with all that wool once we shear on them? Uh, the answer is we like to use it to help other animals in some way. So some of it we keep here and we use it for scent enrichment. So for uh, the sheep or for their friends, the goats, we might put a little bit of it uh, inside a paper bag or put it around the environment. And it might be interesting for the goats to get a close sniff of uh, their sheep friends because they don't usually get to get too close. Um, a lot of it will also spread in our forested areas where wildlife can uh, utilize it for nests for their young. And then sometimes we'll, we're also able to give some to other nonprofits who work with animals. Um, <laughs> but we, we never want to sell the wool. Uh, we never want to use it for any kind of human purpose because unfortunately most sheep who are used for wool um, in this world not only have the tails cut off, but their lives are cut short. They will live an average of five years before they're sent off to slaughter and they're replaced with younger sheep who are gonna be healthier and not have veterinary bills that farmers would have to worry about. We can get a good shot of the tail here. Bo's natural tail, you can see is hanging down and Bean as well. Thanks for hanging with the sheep. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments about sheep, please write them below and we will reply to you. And stay tuned for more videos with our animals.